Good afternoon. Difficult job keeping everybody awake after a good uh, lunch. <coughs> okay. Um, Eliezer of heap reconstruction is, is something that um, is very, very useful for areas uh, which are underserved and in young people who have a problem with destruction of the hip. Commonest cause, one of the commonest causes being uh, neonatal septic arthritis. Um, in these unstable uh, hips, they have got various problems like uh, Trendlinburg gait, they have obviously a shortening, their abduction is uh, limited and as a consequence probably of some amount of flexion deformity at the hip, they develop uh, hyperlordosis with uh, ultimate consequences on the spine. Pelvic support in itself is not something new, it is quite an old uh, procedure first described by Milch in uh, 41. Uh, there is, there are variations uh, of the osteotomy described by various people depending basically on the level that you do the uh, osteotomy at. But with the advent of uh, hip arthroplasty, everyone seems to have forgotten about the usefulness of a osteotomy. Elizarov in 92 described this, uh, his variation of the procedure where basically the osteotomy is, is sort of similar, but he does another osteotomy lower down to restore the length. So, with a traditional uh, pelvic support osteotomy, there are some problems. One is that this is usually in the frontal plane only when you do it with uh, internal fixation. A level may be intertrochantric or subtrochantric and the problem of limb length inequality still remains. When you do an excessive valgus with a pelvic support conventionally, uh, you always get a lateral deviation of the mechanical axis and many of these patients, if any of you all have seen patients who had it, you know, a while ago, uh, you will find that they develop lateral arthritis in the knee ultimately. So, this, this was uh, a patient who had a pelvic support osteotomy in her uh, younger age and she presented actually with this kind of um, lateral arthritis because of uh, valgus of the knee. So, the indications for the Elizarov or the pelvic support osteotomy are most commonly a neonatal septic hip. It can be used when you have done a girdle stone uh, arthroplasty where the hip is very unstable. In certain pol uh, neuromuscular conditions like polio where the hip is uh, unstable and probably with a, with a sort of guarded prognosis or, or a relatively not clear indication is adolescent hip dislocations who are sort of past the age of doing anything for the hip from the pediatric st standpoint and are too young for any kind of um, arthroplasty. So, this is really a two in one procedure. What it consists of is a pelvic support osteotomy which is the proximal and another distal osteotomy for the lengthening and realignment. <laughs> so, in the proximal osteotomy the thing that uh, you can do here because we are doing the second osteotomy lower down is do an extreme amount of valgus, 45 to 60 degrees of valgus can be given in the proximal um, osteotomy. What that does is it shifts your um, trochanter lateral and distal and therefore tensions the um, abductors. You, this is a three dimensional osteotomy, so in addition to the abduction you give a certain amount of uh, extension which eliminates the FFD and by the ligament of Bigelow it helps to lock the hip when the patient is uh, walking. Also the internal rotation which occurs whenever you do an extreme amount of uh, adduction can be compensated by doing putting in a a certain amount of external rotation. The distal osteotomy is usually mid diaphyseal. Uh, the planning of this is critical which I will show you in uh, some of the slides later and you do just the lengthening to restore the length initially and at the end of it you can realign it so that overall the axis from the hip to the ankle uh, 
passes through the center of the knee. So this is how um, we sort of plan the osteotomy. The amount of valgus to be given is usually determined either by a maximum adduction x-ray or a standing uh, x-ray on, on the single leg. And whatever is the maximum adduction that is possible, you add another 10 or 15 degrees of abduction uh, to that. So like in this case, there is uh, 50 degrees of, uh, 40 degrees of adduction. So you add another 15 degrees to that and try to achieve about 55 degrees. That will lock the hip. This is not really, this amount of abduction is usually not easy to gain in um, conventional pelvic support osteotomy. And then at a mid diaphyseal level, you do the osteotomy, lengthen it. At the end of the lengthening, using hinges, you can realign um, this osteotomy so that it now comes uh, straight and the axis passes through the center of the knee. So this is a case. What you see on your left is a high riding um, trochanter. In the middle, you see the uh, single leg weight bearing x-ray and the osteotomy on the right side. This uh, is lengthened through the middle or th through the lower osteotomy to get everything um, straight. So the timing of surgery is also something which is important. Usually it's not a good idea to do it in young children because as they grow the valgus will uh, remodel. So the best time to do it is uh, in a young adult, but if at all you have to do it in a younger child, they should be cautioned um, that you know this valgus is going to remodel and the child may require a repeat osteotomy at a later uh, age. This is how we sort of uh, do it. I use a supine, a patient supine on a standard uh, table. We mark the line of the pelvis or in this case, you can see the uh, wire which is marking uh, the line between the bottom of the two sacroiliac uh, joints which is the same as the line of the pelvis. We put the hip in maximum adduction and the proximal half pins are put in parallel to this line. So that line would be somewhere over there on the surface and the pins are put in uh, proximal and two pins are put in in the proximal fragment. Sorry. The leg is then um, straightened and the second set of pins, that is this one, is put in distal to the planned osteotomy site at an angle which was predetermined from the x-ray. So in like in that example which you saw, if it was 60 degrees, the angle between these two sets of pins should be um, 60 degrees. We then do a percutaneous osteotomy complete the lateral rotation and uh, some amount of um, rotation. What this does is basically gets both the sets of pins um, parallel which are connected externally to arches. These arches are stabilized with uh, connecting rods and then we proceed for the distal fixation where the wire is parallel um, to the joint line. So this is how the thing looks at the end of surgery. Two arches on top which are parallel to each other and the distal fixation and the proximal fixation are, are at an angulation to each other which will be corrected at a later uh, date once the lengthening is uh, done. So the lengthening occurs between these rods which are marked with uh, flags or tapes and once it is lengthened with this hinge the rotation is corrected. Now there are multiple advantages apart from the fact that you can do a you know large amount of correction. There is no blood loss um, with this osteotomy. You can restore the length. You very much, you definitely improve the Trendlinburg and you normalize the um, axis. So this is a patient where you have um, uh, two x-rays. One is uh, with both bearing weight on both legs and here bearing weight only on the um, right leg. So you can see that in the, I don't know how, yeah, you can see it there that um, even though the patient is bearing weight on the right side, there is no real drop of the pelvis um, on the left, left side. 
and even uh, sort of dynamically you can see that <coughs> now when the patient lifts the uh, operated side and is bearing weight on the normal you can see that the pelvis remains level and the body does not sway. When patient bears weight on the affected side again the body sways a little bit but the pelvis does not really um, drop you know. So that, that lends a large amount of stability in terms of um, gait. There is a mild um, sway to the opposite side to balance but this is not usually possible in someone who has had an excised um, hip. Now there is a lot of people who have published uh, on the results of um, Elizar of hip reconstruction and overall in the literature the results of a hip reconstruction are good. Bailey in fact has got probably the longest follow up of up to I think at last uh, when I had spoken to him was about 18 years you know for a patient who was now around uh, 50 years old and all his patients uh, continue to be pain free. That same sort of picture is uh, reflected in all the literature uh, that is there and this is important for one of the questions which a lot of people have what if the patient develops pain. In the reported literature at least all the patients who had an Elizar of hip reconstruction uh, have not developed pain even in the long term. Now uh, planning for this is critical. And uh, what, I, what you see the picture over there is one of the cases which I did uh, where now I have started trying to use a unilateral um, fixator for that. And for getting the axis correct which is this line over there um, I should have had the osteotomy higher up. So if your level of osteotomy is not correct then you can have trouble in terms of the, the um, axis correction. So this patient required another surgery to get the axis corrected. Apart from that the usual troubles that you have with a fixator like uh, pin side infection, a delayed consolidation and if you are not careful about how you put your pins in you can have a certain amount of uh, knee stiffness but these are all avoidable uh, sort of troubles they are not that they will happen in every case. One of the objections to a Elizar of hip reconstruction especially <coughs> in today's age in the metro cities where uh, you know it is when, when I was in the UK there used to be uh, a joke about arthroscopy and the joke was what is the indication for an arthroscopy? The answer to that question is patient does not have an above knee amputation that is how arthroscopy was uh, done and unfortunately that is what is happening about uh, arthroplasty uh, today you know if the patient has a knee if patient has a hip do an arthroplasty but 18 and 20 years old is not the age for an arthroplasty especially in our socio-economic um, situations. So a future total hip replacement may not be necessary as far as the data in the literature goes but even if it is possible this is not uh, impossible for someone who is a regular at uh, arthroplasty this becomes a technically difficult uh, surgery but it is not an impossible surgery. This has already been um, reported as early as 96 where 24 patients who had had um, uh, subtroch osteotomy had a arthroplasty, 4 of them had an arthroplasty without you know undue uh, problems. Technically you have to make it kind of uh, straight do the osteotomy use longer uh, stems etc but it is not something which is impossible but that remains one of the possible objections for a hip reconstruction. So thank you for your attention. <coughs>